Horses, Unit 2 of Grade 1B. Did you notice that I used a Chopin tissue box touch release for the last note for a beautifully wispy, ethereal pianissimo sound? I also asked the student to play with a damper pedal throughout so they can feel like they are underwater with the seahorses. So, uh, let's see, what else can we talk about? Oh, Unit 2 begins with students learning the sharp sign and obviously we know that a sharp sign, whenever you see one in front of a note on the staff, the student plays one half step higher. So G and G sharp, A and A sharp, and B to C is the only uh, half step right there which has only two white keys, right? No black key. But there might be another sharp in this wonderful keyboard of ours that goes from one white key to another white key. Hmm, ask our students, oh my gosh, where do you think the other sharp is that's a white key? Oh, I know, if you go up half a step from E, the E sharp is the same note as an F, right? But we call it an E sharp, okay. So on the next page is a wonderful theory page uh, and good writing experience for our students. On page 10 and 11 is a terrific piece by Mary Lee called The Pet Store. And the student, do, they do have to write in the names of the sharps before they start. And I've asked which two lines of music have the exact same pattern. Again, I'm setting up our students to start to learn what form is. So that's a great way to do so through discovery learning. So in this particular piece, the students are reviewing a push-off touch release. When the student plays a two-note slur that has to end in a short, crispy staccato like this, the only way to play that with a great sense of artistic personality is to push forward and off the key. The upper free arm is the driving force that moves the wrist and the forearm forward. Otherwise, if the student is stuck in the keys with locked fingers, locked wrists, the sound isn't going to be good and it's not going to have any personality. Oh dear, but if we use a push-off touch release, goldfish galore, lizards and ferrets, and cute parakeets. My dog just comes for the treats. Ha! <laughs> All right, and the musicality girl asks, was the piece happy? Did you hear the difference between staccato and legato? The next piece is one of my favorites, Scandinavian folk song. <laughs> by their thumb in the right hand and their second finger is on the A in the bass staff. So it's very good always moving the students out of these basic hand positions. There's a fantastic teacher duet part as well. The next page is a wonderful technique exercise called Free Arm and Strong Fingers. Papa Haydn is patiently showing the little girl how to do this work. So have the students remember that their arm must be free so they can go north, south, west, and east so that they can feel this. The quality of motion always affects the quality of the sound. Chopin wished to free his students from every, every sense of stiffness and cramped movements of the hand and the arm. 
So his complete focus was on the beauty of the tone. And it's very important for students to understand this inward and outward motion in order to get a beautiful legato sound. So this interesting technique exercise is called forward and back. The students should play it slowly so that they can think about moving their arm forward when they play black keys. And then when they go back to the white keys, they can move their arm back towards their bodies. Move it back, move arm forward, and then move the arm back. And starting here, move the arm forward, start to move it back for the white keys. And then it's, the motion is back towards their bodies. Move their arm forward. that the student actually stretches or reaches for all of these black keys instead. Then they start to have these starfish fingers, right? Flat fingers and an ugly sound. And the arm is so rigid, so this is why it's really a very excellent part of succeeding at the piano, where I'm always talking about a free arm and strong fingers. Okay, so now I'd like to share with you one of my favorite pieces of Unit 2 in the recital book. This piece is called The Knights of Young King Arthur. Down from the hills come the knights in shining armor. The horses are prancing with their heads held high. Banners are waving and shields reflect the sunlight. The dazzling knights of young King Arthur soon are nigh. And you spell nigh, N-I-G-H. Wonderful piece by Mary Leaf, a great teacher duet part with it, but I will play the student part. <laughs> books. At the very beginning of the entire theory book, we have writing activities, rhythm activities, ear training activities, time to compose, follow the leader activities, and parrot play activities. So students are always combining their theory with composition and ear training throughout this entire theory book. So, oh my gosh, there's so many wonderful illustrations reinforcement of all the concepts. I love this one on the phrase, where the students think about a rainbow in order to create the phrase shape. I love this base G, be a mountaineer. There's so many wonderful, wonderful activities. And uh, there's a great pioneer village at the end of the book, where students are reinforcing all of the new concepts that they've learned in 1B.